All right, let's do our warm ups and go from there. So shoulders back and down, ankles, knees, hips, shoulders lined up, and core activated. Just get your ribs in and up and that spine lengthening up through the crown. Spread your toes out, sink evenly into your feet, and don't forget to breathe. And as you breathe, bring in awareness along with the energy and exhale stress and tension. And just take a few moments centering into your yoga frame of reference. Inhale, arms to shoulder level, stretch your fingertips out, head, head up. Exhale, hands to your heart, stretch out to the front, keep the shoulders down. And then clasp your hands behind you, just gently interlace down toward the floor and lift your heart. Stretch your head back, just a nice upper body back end. And then pivot at your hips and round forward, coming all the way over. So just deepen as much as you like, spreading your toes, lifting your hands, move your chin around, release your jaw, and lift your sitting bones. Stretch those legs. And then slowly start at the bottom of your spine, working your way all the way back up, and lift your heart. Shoulders down, head back, upper body back, bend once again. And then on an inhalation, come upright, releasing your arms back into mountain pose, and just notice that circulation increase. And again, arms at shoulder level, hands to your heart, stretch to the front, and clasp your hands the opposite way behind you. Hands down, chest high, and head back for a back bend. And then again, pivot on over. Lift your hips and your hands. Take a moment, spread the toes out, no gripping. And then knees bent slightly, work your way back into the back bend as you come all the way up. And again, chest is high. And those hips are over your ankles. And then inhale upright again into mountain pose. Side stretches next. So just feel your body and get ready. One hand down, the other arm out, palm toward the ceiling, hand over your shoulder. Stretch the hands away, shoulders still down, and lean to the side. So remember, no twist on this one. Don't lean forward. Push the foot you're leaning away from down. Feel those ribs stretch apart. And just let the hand on the leg come toward the, or below the knee if it wants to, as far as it works. And then inhale up, release that arm. Feel the difference. So we need to balance. Other arm out, shoulder down, palm up, hand above your shoulder. Stretch the hands away, arm by your ear. And again, no twist, just lean straight to the side. Hands sliding along your leg and the other one reaching away. Take a moment feeling those ribs open a little bit more. And then come on back up and release. And again, as you get back into mountain pose, just feel those ribs a little bit more open. Shoulders back and down. Stretch the spine open for our twist. Arms out, palms toward the ceiling, hands over your shoulders. Just clasp your elbows, bring the arms by your ears, and stretch the spine apart, turn to one side. Spread your toes, get the weight on both feet evenly, and keep it that way as you pivot forward. So just deepen in the twist as much as you like into that pivot. Sitting bones up, arms by your ears, and keep the weight on both feet as you stay in your twist and work up into the upper body back bend. Shoulders down, elbows back, chest high. And remember, no pressure in that low back. And then inhale upright, exhale around to the center, switching your arms around, and again, next to your ears. Stretch the spine and turn to the other side. Take another breath, exhale on over, and deepen as much or as little as you need on this side. Weight on both feet, and again, just relax into that pivot. Work your way up in the twist, 
And one more upper body back. Shoulders down, elbows back, and chest high. Take a moment, feeling the back bend, just deepening only as far as you would like. Inhale, upright. Exhale around to the center. Shoulders down, arms up, extended mountain. Spread your toes. Pivot forward, arms next to your ears. Stretch the sitting bones back and the spine straight. And then drop into ragdoll, just hanging. And pull in deeper with your hands behind your legs if you'd like to get an extra stretch on your back. And then when you're ready, hands to the front and wind your way back into mountain pose. Take a moment there, just feel your body a little more activated. Spread your toes, let's do a little balance. Just a nice warm up. So lift your toes on your balance foot, then spread them out, but don't grip. Make sure you're not lifting that ball of the foot area. You want that really connected. Ankle, knee, hip, shoulder lined up. Activate that core, ribs in and up, shoulders back and down, crown to the ceiling. And when you're centered and grounded, bring the other foot up a little or more or toward your heart. And then circle the ankle. Making sure it's working nicely today. And flex some point before you release. Switch to the other side, spreading out the toes, not gripping, ankle, knee, hip, shoulder lining up, keeping that core working, supporting your back. And again, when you're ready, bring the other foot up as high as it wants to come on this side. Don't cross it over, just keep it straight and circle your ankle. And then flex and point before you put it back down. It's a little more activated through the ankles. And bring your hands to your heart. Look at them. Inhale, bring them toward the ceiling. And pull them back behind you as you lift your heart. Nice upper body back then. Swan dive forward. Just pivot on over and into right dog. Slide your hands up under your knees, halfway up, and get everything straight. Elbows, knees, and spine. Keep the chin in a little bit, remember, don't crunch your neck. Exhale back down, <coughs> excuse me, and roll your way up. And again, as you come back into mountain pose, let's step to the end of the mat. So we're going to work that hip flexors on the front of the thighs a little bit with some lunges. So feet hip width apart, toes straight ahead, everything lined up in mountain pose, and hands to your heart. Inhale, hands toward the ceiling. Look up at your thumbs, another nice upper body back bend as much as you like. And then again, let's swan dive forward all the way over, rag up. Hands up under your knees, on your shins, and press just gently as you straighten your spine, your elbows, and your knees. And then maybe your knees, hands under your shoulders to the mat. Remember, you can use blocks if you need to, to raise the floor. Bring your right foot way far back into a lunge. Drop your hips down evenly toward the floor. Chest forward, head slightly up, but remember, don't crunch the back of your neck. And just let that hip sink nicely, feeling that stretch starting on your leg. <clears throat> As you're there, make sure your front knee is over your ankle, not sinking in or out. And then bring your knee down. You can pad if you need to, or fold your mat. And then slide the toes further back. Try to stay on top of the kneecap, not up directly on it. And just again, let that hip stretch and sink a little bit more. Exhale, just let it relax down, down, down. Not a lot of pressure in your hands, just positioning your shoulders over your wrists. And then tuck your toes under, lift your knee, not your hip. And press back through your heel again into that nice lunge, keeping your hip as low as possible so your ankle, knee, hip, and shoulder line up as much as they can. And then step forward, 
into ragdoll and let that hip release and relax. Hands together, inhaling and coming into mountain pose. And you can stay there or you can turn around. I am just so you can see me. And get ready for the other side. So notice the difference on the two hips. The one we stretch is going to feel different. So we need to balance. So bring your hands again to your heart. Inhale, hands toward the ceiling, looking up. Another back bend because we love back bends for our yoga. And then again, swan dive, arms out, pivoting all the way to ragdoll. Hands under your shin, under your knees on your shins, and stretch out in that halfway up. So get as straight as you can through the back, through the arms and the legs, stretching. And then bending your knees, hands to the floor, right under your shoulders, and the left foot goes way back in the lunge. Drop the hips evenly, keep the knee over the ankle, and stretch just slightly forward. Shoulders and shoulder blades toward your waist. And then bring your knee down, slide those toes a little further back behind you for that stretch to start on the front of the left thigh this time. And again, as you get there, just take a moment to relax and breathe, adjusting, checking that front knee, make sure it doesn't sink out or in. And then again, when you're ready, we'll just stretch that hip flexor behind you, sinking it toward the floor. And then tuck your toes, lift your knee, not your hip, and press back through the heel. Crown high slightly and chest slightly forward. And then again, push forward, relaxing and drag down. Hands together, inhaling, and to your heart. Go on up into your back bend if you want to stay on that place or shift to the other end of the mat. And again, hands high, head stretching away and chest up. Exhale, follow your hands down this time into ragdoll again. And inhale, stretching in the halfway up stretch. Knees bent, coming down, hands to the floor, warrior blocks, and step that right foot back. Sink through your hip, bring the knee down. Again, slightly above the kneecap, sliding those toes back, just relaxing into it. And you can stay there if that's enough stretch on your hip flexor. Or you can bring your hands to the front knee, top of the head up toward the ceiling. And then again, just sink a little bit more, looking forward or slightly up as you lift your heart. So a teeny bit of a back bend if that feels okay for you. So feel this hip again, just getting a nice stretch along the front. Exhale, any tension, just keep sinking the hips evenly toward the floor. And then bringing your hands down again under your shoulders. Once more, tuck the toes, push back through the heel, and get a straight line from the heel to the shoulders as possible. Push forward, and again, just relax there, releasing that hip, and tucking your chin slightly. Hands together, inhaling, coming up into the back bend a little bit as you raise those hands to the ceiling. So really, as you're in that back bend, also feel those hip flexors stretching a little bit as you're in that position. And I'm moving to the other end once more. And following your hands down to your heart, pivot out over. And again, just relax, releasing those hips and lifting the sitting bones. Hands up under your knees, on your shins for our halfway up stretch. Keep your neck stretching as you're there. Keep the shoulders, shoulder blades, of course, toward your waist. Bend your knees, hands to the floor, left foot way back for your lunge. And again, just stay there, relaxing into that position. And bring your knee down. Pat under it as always if you need. And again, just relaxing down through that hip flexor. Give it a good stretch by relaxing. 
And if you're ready and want a little bit more, hands up to the knee, sink those hips even further. So this front knee stays above the ankle or can go a little bit forward, but not beyond your toes, remember, and not in or out, but straight up. Exhale, just relaxing, letting that stretch happen. Remember, never force it, let it happen. And then again, hands under your shoulders to the mat. Tuck your toes, lift the knee, not the hip. Press back through your heel. Feel the stretch, let it happen. And then push forward and release it. Just take a moment there on ragdoll, letting those hips release. And then hands together, coming again all the way up. And another nice upper body back then, letting those hamstrings still get further. Hip flexors get a little stretch. So take a moment there, relaxing into the stretch and lifting your heart. Bring your hands out, swan dive again, and into ride dog. Hands up under your knees, halfway up stretch, right knee is stretching, lengthening everything. Spread your toes, bend your knees, hands under your shoulders to the floor or your blocks. Again, right foot back into lunge. So spread your toes, let the hips even out and sink toward the floor. And again, we're bringing the knee down to the mat. Slide it back, get that stretch going. And once more, hands to that front knee and sinking down even more. If you like that level, stay there. If you want a little more, you can bring your hands down and bring them up toward the ceiling or raising your head, looking slightly up. But remember, keep that neck stretching while you do that. Chest forward and up, upper body back bend. The more back bend you get into, remember, the more you're going to feel it through that hip flexor as well as you sink those hips evenly toward the floor. Shoulder blades toward your waist, of course, and don't forget to breathe. If your hands are up, go ahead and bring them down. One, put your hands again under your shoulders on the mat. Toes tucking, and once more, lifting through the knee. Keep the hips down, feel the stretch, and then come forward. Take a moment in that release in ragdoll. Just feel the hips, lift the sitting bones, stretch the legs, and hands together, coming again all the way up. And another stretch into your back bend. And again, staying there, we're moving to the other end. Stretch shoulders down, hips spread above your ankles, and chest up toward the ceiling. And once more, swan dive forward over into ragdoll. Hands up into your halfway up position, elbows, knees, and spine straightening. Lengthen everything and bend your knees, hands to the floor, left foot back to lunge. As you get into the lunge, just take a moment to adjust, checking your front knee and making sure that that heel is pushing back and that hip flexor sinking with the other hip toward the floor. Knee down to the floor, pad if you need to, and slide those toes back as far as you like. And again, staying there, hands to the front knee, coming forward, keeping that neck long and straight. Just slightly forward and shoulders down, or sliding the hands down and up into extension. And again, sink the hips evenly, just relaxing through that hip flexor as you let it stretch gently. Make sure that knee stays where it's supposed to be, not moving around and not going beyond your toes. Shoulder, shoulder blades down. Chest high. And bring your hands to the floor again, outside your foot, under your shoulders. Tuck the toes, lift the knee, press back through your heel. Take a moment there, feeling that hip flexor stretching gently still. And then push it forward and relax in random. 
Take a breath. And once more, hands together, coming all the way up. And one more back bend, just stretching those hip flexors. And let's move to the other end of the mat if you're moving, or just stay there on your stretch. Again, as you get into that upper body back bend, just lift your heart, stretch your head back, make sure your neck isn't crunching. And let's follow the hands slowly to the floor one more time. Drop into ragdoll, lift your sitting bones, and our halfway up stretch, hands on the shoulders. Stretch it out, everything long, and bend your knees, hands to the floor, and the right foot one more time into our lunge. Take a moment and breathe, exhaling tension. Now this time, if you feel like your balance is pretty good today, you can stay with your knee up and just slide your hands forward, keep that knee above your ankle, not in or out, and come up into your extended lunge. You can have your knee to the floor if you prefer. But keep pressing back through the heel behind you, or slide it back if your leg is down with the knee on the floor. Chest forward, exhale tension, sink the hips. And when you're ready, bring the hands back to the mat, stretch through the hip, and step forward. Release and relax in your, in your ragdoll position. Feel the hips, let them release, no tension. And again, hands together, coming up into one more upper body back bend stretch. Take a few breaths there, just relaxing through the hips, through your body. And once again, we're going to bring the hands down. Gently into our ragdoll position. Hips lifting, pivoting right there at those hip flexors. Hands up under your knees for our halfway up stretch. And exhale, hands to the floor, right under your shoulders and into our lunge. Once again, establish your balance. Make sure your knee is in position. And if you want, slide your hands out and up into your extended lunge. Knee to the floor for those of you who prefer it. Exhale, chest forward, shoulders down, knee above your ankle. Take a moment and breathe, make your adjustments. <sighs> breathe. And again, exhaling, hands to the floor. Feel that stretch, hip and body all aligned, knee over your ankle. And step forward once more, releasing everything, ragdoll position. Hands together. Let's do one more stretch on those hip flexors. Take a breath, lift your heart, stretch through the front and swan dive forward. Hands under your knees, on your shins, halfway up stretch. And we're gonna bend our knees and transition to the floor into our child pose. So hips back on your heels, hands next to your feet, forehead to the floor. Take a moment, just breathing. Bring your knees together, get a good back stretch if you love it. And again, just let those shoulders relax. The hips are releasing notice. Just let that happen. And then on an inhalation, sit up on your heels and bring your hands and knees into table position. So wrists, elbows, and shoulders lined up, knees and hips lined up, and stretch your spine long. So we're going to go into pigeon, spread your fingers, and slide your right knee between the hands. Slide that left leg back, nice stretch again on that hip flexor. Bring your right knee over to the edge of the mat, 
and your heel up as far toward your hands as it wants to go. You can get that shin perpendicular to your body if that works for you. Shoulder, shoulder blades down, let the hips sink toward the floor. So again, we're stretching that hip flexor behind us. This hip rotator on the right leg is working with that knee bend out way to the side. Chest forward, shoulders down, spine stretching, especially through the neck, crown toward the ceiling. Stay with your hands on the floor if you love it. And if you don't, you can slide your hands forward and come a little lower into that easier position for your hip flexor. So again, hips are sinking evenly down toward the floor. This heel on that front leg is out to the side and further forward, so you're not sinking too much into it if that works for you. Take a moment and breathe, just letting those hips relax down evenly. Staying with your hands under your shoulders or with them extended forward in that lower version. Either way, hips sinking evenly down toward the floor. Nice little upper body back bend, lifting the chest slightly forward and up, keeping that neck stretching open and breathing. So just let your body deepen. If your hands are still forward and you're on your forearms, come on back to our starting position. Hands under your shoulders, chest forward, stretch the neck, relax the hips, feel what's working in your hip and your hip flexor. And then pressing gently into your hands, bring the front knee back and the back knee up into our table position. And you can go even further back into an extended child if you'd like, so that you can release those hips a little bit more for a moment as you relax. Head toward the floor. Shoulders toward your waist. Keep stretching those arms. And then pivot back up into table. So we're going to go, of course, into our pigeon on the other side. So take your left knee between your hands and slide the right leg back for that hip flexor stretch a little bit more. Just relax. So our front knee is going to go over to the left off the side of the mat. Bring that heel up as far as it wants to go and sink the hips straight down. Chest forward, shoulders down, stretching through the crown with that neck nice and open as you're in that position. Shoulder blades toward your waist as always. Sink the hips evenly down toward the floor. Exhaling any stress or tension. And again, those of you who like it a little more gently in the hips and the arms, you can bring those hands forward, elbows under your shoulders. Take a moment, chest forward, chest crown high, and chin slightly in for that neck stretch. Hips going down, down, down toward the floor. Exhale, just relaxing into it in whichever position you're in. Remember, personal practice for what's right for your body. Chest forward and head up. Stretch the neck, the whole spine. Sink the hips. If you're still on your forearms, come on back, hands under your shoulders. Take another breath as you're there, and then pressing into your hands. Front knee comes back, back knee up, and you can sink once more into child's pose. Take a breath, just relaxing into that release. And then come on up into your table position once more for our twist. So we'll do a threading the needle. Take one hand, slide it through, and come head and shoulder down to the floor. Don't go on your neck, just the head and shoulder. And that hand is just sliding out at shoulder level. Bring your elbow of the front hand, the right hand up toward the ceiling. Take a moment there in the twist. Stay there if you love that version. If you want more in the low back, bring your foot near your hand. So my left hand is slid through, so my right foot goes next to it. Stay on your head and your shoulder, not your neck. 
and just relax, push out through the heel. If that's a good one, stay there. If you want more upper body, middle body back then, bring your hand to the ceiling, right hand to the ceiling, and look at it as you bring it back behind you. But don't go too far, it gets balancing. Stay on your head, rolling to the back of your head and your shoulder, not your neck, ever. So just open through the heart, letting that hand come down toward the floor and the foot push away on the other direction if you're in the full version. But remember, you can always stay in that first version with your hands down and your knee under your hip. Take a moment and worry. If your hand is up, bring it back down. If your leg is out, bring it back in and push into your right hand, unthreading your needle. Coming back into table position and of course, getting ready for our second twist. I'm just turning around so I can face the camera a little bit. Knees under your hips, wrists, elbows, and shoulders lined up. Take that opposite hand through. So this time I'm sliding my right hand, bringing my shoulder and head to the floor as I relax into the twist. Knees up, or knees under your hips, hips up, straight toward the ceiling. Relax there, perfectly good twist. Bring your elbow up if you want to stay in the first version. And just relax with that head and shoulder on the floor. If you want the lower back increased, bring your foot near your right hand. So left foot is pushing heel out away from your hand. Leg as straight as you can, feeling that lower back getting a little more twist. If you love that and you want even more, the right, no, the left hand comes up above your shoulder. And again, roll onto the back of your head, not your neck as you lower that hand, back of the hand behind you toward the floor as far as it wants to go without stress or strain. And remember you're opening across the heart, across the chest. Just let that open gently, hand coming down only as far as gravity brings it. Staying on your shoulder and your head, not your neck, pushing out through the heel and the hand if you're in full version. And if you're still in the first version, perfectly good twist, just relax into it and allow the twist. Take a few breaths, just relaxing, tension out. Whenever you're ready to release, if your hand is up, bring it down. If your leg is out, bring it in. And again, come the thread back up into table. Take a moment there, sinking back into your child pose, which you can stay in for your relaxation if you prefer. Or you can extend forward into resting crocodile, or I'm going to slide off into staff position and release into corpse pose for my relaxation because it's easier for me to talk. So choose your relaxation position and let your body totally relax. Release those hips and move them side to side gently. Relax the shoulders, hands, palms up, wherever position you're in. And just let the legs release, the muscles relax, your whole body grow heavy, sinking into that surface beneath you. Just let earth support you. Feeling that heaviness in your limbs, just relax completely through your entire body, letting it go. And as you release your body, just release thoughts of your body from your mind. As always, just let the mind then drift, paying no attention to the new thoughts coming to you as they will. Let them flow in and out as easily as your breath. No need to remember the past or anticipate the future. Just let those thoughts disappear, floating away as easily as your breath. And let your body sink deeper and your mind float freely, allowing your awareness to release your body and your mind. And as you breathe, just allow your body and your mind to release your awareness to release both your body and your mind, finding only that peace within. Feel your body 
and your mind with the peace. Growing into the peace completely, breathing, relaxing, being peace. And of course, stay relaxing as long as you have time today. You have that opportunity. And it's time to get ready for the rest of your day. Just enjoying energy and awareness with the breath back to the moment, to the room, to your body. Breathing more deeply and stretching gently, however feels good for you today. And of course, when you're ready for that final yoga hug of appreciation, just bring Knees toward your heels, and then your knees, heels toward your hips, and knees up toward your heart. Wrap your arms around, give yourself that appreciative yoga hug. Let me turn my thing. Give yourself a good stretch, however feels good for you today. And when you're ready for your final yoga hug of appreciation, sitting arms toward your heels, heels toward your hips, knees up toward your foot. Wrap your arms around. Give yourself that appreciative yoga hug. Letting your body know you appreciate its yoga work and the work your body does for you every day. And when you're ready to raise, head and feet to the floor, or roll to the side. And sit back up, getting ready for whatever's ahead for you today. Thanks for joining me.